patience is a close friend of wisdom. The night before, she asked me to hold her hand where she could twirl. She loved to do that, and that's the last time I really got to spend time with her. Ask your opinion. Women have an instinct. Okay? Men don't have it. Okay? Ask my wife. Okay. All right. What was your instinct that night? She killed her. She killed her. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why in a minute. Why my instinct was that way. It was my gut feeling. Leslie, what was your opinion? Leslie. You said it from day one. Miss Leslie, what, what have you said? She's done something to her. Okay. Is it possible that somebody could have snatched her? No. Nope. Not no. with 20 dogs on that property. No. Yeah. There's 20 dogs. Well, I've heard there's, you know, that number varies, right? Let, I think dogs there's a lot of dogs on the property when you all pull up there when you pull up there in the past what do the dogs do they come running right down to the end of the driveway so and they surround you they come the down the driveway yeah and if they don't know you they show their teeth they're ready to eat you okay or the boys might have done something and they're covering it up oh maybe the boys I mean, accidentally hurt her what's your gut on that my gut's still aiming towards the mother yeah towards mom even though the boys didn't and bring me into her, I still say it's the mother. There's just something in my gut that keeps telling me it's the mother. At first, when I first met him, I only knew that Candace had a green suburban. Donnie had a black truck, which Candace had sold. When she came back from her trip from Wisconsin, she sold her husband's truck because he took his white truck with him to Utah. Okay. And there's other trucks on the, there's other trucks on the property too that were not sold yet. There was a blue one that used to sit as you came out her front door. It used to sit right there in the yard. Okay. Next to the tree where the swing was. Okay. That's been moved over by the mother's trailer. Since the incident? Get it right, the mother's camper. Well, the mother's camper, I call it trailer. From what I've seen in the pictures, you know, it's been moved over by the camper. No, um, but it didn't have any wheels. It didn't have, it wheel. it didn't have no way. wheels, no insides, it didn't even have an engine. So let's talk about the house day. Was filthy. Yes. Oh, you tell her that. You tell her <laughs> the that. house was nasty. I didn't go up there because I didn't so, like her. Just so I always stay so here. What, what's your impression of Don? Yeah. He seemed like an outgoing guy at first. You know, he has his problems. Like we all do. Yep. Right. He loved. He loved Summer to death. Yeah. That was his pride and joy. Yeah. Honestly, I think Candace done something to her because Candace was jealous of that little baby. Why though? Why because would Because that baby was getting Donnie's attention. Oh, uh, okay. Honestly, I don't feel that Donnie has anything to do with it. I may be wrong. Didn't like the way she done her kids. Mm -hmm. And would, everybody's how like, call DCS, call DCS. DCS has been called so many times on this woman, it's not even funny. So what the Facebook people don't realize, there has been people try to step in. No. She avoids them. Sure, like sure. Like the plague. Okay, okay. She would see them pull in her driveway, she would lock the door and not let them in. So, so they're... I mean... What and then they would make appointments with yeah, them. Right, I get it. To come back and do their house check and, you know, the pee test and they would warn them. It's not the prettiest house in the world, but. Huh? I said it's not the most beautiful house in the world. You know what? It's a house. It's a, it's a house. You know what? 
you know, I, God forbid, you know, anybody judge you for having a bad house, you know, I mean, it is what it is. At least you're putting food on the table oh, and the trying there? to do your best, I saw. I saw. And then Allie says that she bought the food. And then this is uh, over here. This, yeah, this is where you do your fire for the yeah, kids. Is that an old generator? Yeah. Does it work? No, did it at some point? It worked like over 14, 15 years ago, way before I was here. Old school bus, you gonna turn that into a camper? That was my mom's plan. We have continually droned uh, drug ponds, uh, foot searched since we started working. I would say that we've droned maybe a thousand acres. We, uh, we had permission to search uh, about 200 acres. Uh, area that had not, according to the property owner, had not been searched well in the past or at all. Saturday, eight people, including a drone operator and the Wells private investigator, searched a property on the backside of Ben Hill Road. There were rumors of footprints and things that were found in the woods when Summer went missing. And, uh, you know, if you sort of look at that evidence and you look at the, the surrounding properties, uh, and the direction those footprints were headed sort of gives you an idea of where to go look. Chris Storms with First to Deploy has been assisting CNC investigations in their searches. We also use a, uh, a Mavic 2 Pro that allows us to shoot in 20 megapixel and we use that to run through a program called Locate. Locate can detect a, a color of a shirt from 200 feet in the air, even if it's the size of a quarter. The drones are not only used to map out the search area, but one even has an infrared camera that can detect non-recorded burials up to four years old. When you put someone in the ground, um, basically as, as they decompose and it kind of kills everything around it, but as everything grows back over, over time, it flourishes. It kind of creates a super fertile soil and what you can detect on near infrared is the different color of the ground that you couldn't normally see with the naked eye. Saturday's search also included a neighbor who says the environment is similar to how it was when Summer disappeared, but he still doesn't think she could be found in the area. It's a lot of ground to cover. It's very thick. I guess anything is possible. Once you've seen two solid weeks of so many people covering such a, an area so thoroughly, it doesn't seem likely but anything's possible. The private investigators typically put on a search like this once a month in the Ben Hill Road area surrounding the Wells family home. They tell me they will continue to do this until summer is found. You know, I've been in this hole twice now. Help me understand that. Well, once when my mom called me and said that they couldn't find my little sister Rosie. Okay. When she disappeared. And that was heartbreaking. But my daughter, that's twice as worse. Right. You might as well just rip my chest out, throw it out there for the fish to eat because it's worthless without her. I try to be strong for my boys. I try to have hope. Like everybody is against me. It's all right. You wanna you wanna rest for a minute. You wanna yeah, take please. a break for a second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's she'd be frantic. I mean, she's she's having a hard time, and she'll be okay for a little bit, and then I mean, she's up and down. This Father's Day, Wells tells me his worst fear has been realized. Do you think at this point that she is still alive? I really don't know. Hopefully, yes. Depending on how bad or what's going on with her. I mean, we hope, there's always hope. I think it's really tough on the on the, all the people out here that are missing Father's Day, and it's putting that, making them a little bit edgy, and we're a little bit edgy. My wife is really edgy, and it's just it's it's getting tougher. I think. For everybody. Took me to my end of the ER because my leg was messing up on me. The hospital is about 25 minutes from the Wells Beach Creek home in Kingsport. She took me into the hospital and I ended up getting a 
a shot for it to get rid of the pain. And they prescribed me medication. Summer, her mother and grandmother spent the day in the closest city to their house. Then we <laughs> waited around for my prescription. Summer went swimming that day at the horse stables, I believe it was. We were waiting on my mother's prescription from the drugstore at Walgreens on Fort Henry. Prescription at Walgreens. So we just went up to Warriors. There was all kinds of trash everywhere at Warriors when we showed up. And I let Summer out to play. And we just stood there for about 15, 20 minutes. And then we all got back in the truck and went and got mom's prescription. And I took him home. And then we came home. And so then Summer came back here with you later that afternoon, right? Yes. The trip from Warriors Path back to Ben Hill Road is just over 17 miles. But Bly couldn't recall how many hours that was before she reported her daughter missing. About how many hours like, was that before she was reported missing? You know, I really can't tell you all the time details because time gets away from you when you're trying to enjoy yourself. That's why I come on camp because I am sick and tired of the lies. Missing Hawkins County six-year-old Summer Wells' grandmother Candace Hare says it was hard to speak on camera as she's been reliving a familiar nightmare. Rose has been missing for 12 years. I miss her dearly. She's the baby of the family. Hare's youngest daughter and Summer's aunt, Rosemarie Bly, went missing from Wisconsin on August 21st of 2009. To go through it again with my granddaughter Summer is very heartbreaking. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, is what a parent goes through, what a grandmother goes through. It's the not knowing is what tears us up. It's the not knowing. Brothers are not doing too well. They're kind of fighting more than usual and stuff. And I got into it first thing this morning and the, the team come up running up the hill. They heard screams and so I've been trying to keep it down. Summer's siblings aren't the only ones struggling. Her father tells me her mother is also worried about the five-year-old little girl. Uh, she's, she'd be frantic. I mean, she's, she's having a hard other come in. She says, where's Summer? She went down in the basement. She didn't answer, so she went down there and she was gone. So she went out the basement door, which was unlocked. And we have a single sense. We really clicked because Summer is just kind of silly and goofy, and I am too. Um, you can ask people who know me. They know that I'm just a silly, goofy girl. And so I think we just kind of clicked in that way, that she could hang out with me, and we would just laugh at the same stuff and giggle at silly, stupid things. <laughs> the giggling silenced two years now, with the community still looking for answers. We miss her a lot. Just we miss the, the love, the hugs. I miss her hugs so much. She was a very loving child. So much. She was a very loving child. A child who thrived when she felt that love right back. Yeah, she really did. She, she came to me a lot and just wanted to be held and wanted to get attention. And I love to give attention, so it worked out good. It's been a life-changing two years for Summer's special friend and teacher. I lost my mom and my dad since Summer went missing. So just add that on top of losing a little girl and missing her so much, it has been overwhelming. And I don't sleep a lot. There's a lot of times where I just lay in bed and I just pray. A hole in her heart for those lost and the pain of not knowing where could this vibrant child be. The smiling little girl who gifted Robin a necklace so proudly on Mother's Day. I just felt like, you know, the summer is kind of like a daughter to me. It feels just like I lost a child that I just was so precious and so dear that it's, that's what it feels like. But Robin says even when things are darkest, she sees something bigger. I've already been inspired so many times by people who have told me that praying for summer has made them start praying again. That because they're praying for summer, that it has made them start talking to God again. And they might have been angry at God, they might have stopped talking to God, but because this little girl's missing and they care about her, they're praying for her. And in the process of praying for summer, they're starting to have a closer walk with the Lord themselves. 
I'm just having to put my faith completely into in God and know that He has a better plan. And uh, and that's pretty much where I'm at. My wife is still struggling. Social media have, have come out, you know, and protested at my job, um, everywhere we go, and uh, so it's hard for us to get any work or anything in Eastern Tennessee. I think they're scared to of our of our house because of what happened, and uh, is one of the problem, one of the issues, you know. So. We would like to buy another house here in Arkansas. We couldn't understand what happened to Summer. The police couldn't understand, and they were questioning us. They were at times they were hard on us, and other times they weren't. Uh, it just depended, depending on you know what police agency was there at the time. So we try to bounce things off of each other all the time. We might have talks about you know some of the drug activity that was going on at the time and was going on right after her disappearance for quite a while. Um, but yeah, there's nothing new. About two months ago, they talked to our private investigators, um, you know, and the FBI did, and they shared what they could with us, I mean, but they was just trying to come up with any new information or leads that they possibly could. and. So far, we just haven't been able to come up with anything. She's been burnt by so many people that want to, you know, supposedly, you know, interview her or help and stuff, and then basically turn on her in every imaginable way. You know, she's she's been hurt deeply by these kind of things, you know, plus the thought of, you know, we lost our daughter and you know our boys are in custody also with the CPS. That's all we can hope for is for God to produce a miracle for all the Christian folks around here because there's so many people praying. Authorities say that according to Hawkins County court documents, this is not the first time officers were dispatched to the home on Ben Hill Road. They were there on October 14th for a domestic assault. Summer's mom, Candace Bly, told officers Donald Wells came home drunk and saw someone else in the house and believed that Bly was cheating on him. I was in Utah, so we, she was thinking one thing and I was thinking another, you know, and, but once, once we got to talk and figure things out, you know, we, we smoothed it all out. I mean, there was, we, it was just, we weren't on the same page, a lack of communication. The following day, Bly filed an order of protection against Wells. In the order, she says Wells drinks and throws things and that he was mentally and physically abusive. She said, quote, I am afraid for my children and myself. Because we were fighting, of course, you know, people are going to tell the police whatever to, to get their way, you know. we. We've worked it out. She's apologized to me. Four days later, Bly asked for the charges to be dismissed. Wells pleaded guilty to possession of a handgun while under the influence and turned the weapon over to the sheriff's office. The domestic assault charges and unlawful possession of a handgun were dismissed. She's went to the district attorneys. She even talked to the judge and told him that she made a serious mistake and uh, and, you know, and that's the end of it. She didn't get hurt, and I never hurt nobody. The night before, she asked me to hold her hand where she could twirl. She loved to do that, and that's the last time I really got to spend time with her. I think it had to do a lot with Dr. Phil, the way it came out on Dr. Phil when she was out there. I was not out there. I think it hurt Candace in a way. I don't know if it's helped or not. I don't believe it has. Maybe it's gotten more attention out everywhere. Um, On June 15th, the day Summer was reported missing, Harris says she spent the entire day with her daughter and granddaughter. She says it started with a trip to the emergency room to have her knee checked out. They prescribed me medication to take to get the swelling down out of my knee and around my knee because it was inflamed and then we waited around for my prescription. Summer went swimming that day at the horse stables, I believe it was. After the family returned home with groceries, Hare says she took a nap, woke up and repotted cactus plants with her granddaughter.
She says Summer ate a peppermint, went inside the house to play with her brothers, and that was the last time she was seen. There was no sign of her. We never did find her. She called 911 and she called Donnie and we sent the boys down over the hill and I stood in front of the, over by the edge there and watched them and, and was praying to God every minute that nobody would take them. Okay is if there is a, 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 a suspicious person or somebody like that, that now you mentioned, or Don, I can't remember in the first interview, Don had mentioned that on the news, on the news, uh, he mentioned that he thought that she was abducted. How did that conclusion come so quickly? Help me understand that. Because she never wanders. Okay. She always stays right there by the house, right there by the swing. Okay. She loved to be outside all the time, and that's, that was her, unfortunately, her, you know, her downfall. Because a lot of times, we'd be, the boys would be inside, and we'd be like, where's Summer? Why'd you leave her out there alone? You know, go get Summer now. You know, and that's happened over and over again. And uh, we'd come out, and she would always be close by, but we was always coming, up. she had to be outside. She was an outdoor person. And, she loved to be outside. You know, she's either she'll go to grandma's, but she'll be right back to the house. She, okay. She'll never leave the house. She'll never go out of my sight. Okay. So, what did you tell Don at work when you called? I him? just said she was missing. I can't find her. That's okay. all I said. Do you remember where he was that day? What he job was, site I he was on? I believe he was in Jonesboro at the Meadows. I believe. Don had gone away. Don had gone to Utah, and then Jose had been introduced to Candace because he had a connection. Jose was a friend of Andrew. Andrew is the boyfriend of Allison. Now, Allison and Andrew have a son, and that is Hunter. So anyways, Jose came down from New York with Andrew and a gang of others. I'm not sure exactly who it was that, was, that came along for the ride, but... The plan was that they were going to be staying at Ben Hill Road at that house. But after they arrived, they decided not to stay except for Jose. Jose had been going through a very difficult time in his life. And he accepted the invitation from Candace. Yeah, it does seem odd because the house is so very small. So I kind of wonder why is she inviting all these people to stay at a house where there's no bedrooms other than for her children. And her children are sharing, you know, if it's the three boys in summer and there's only really one bedroom there. So how is it that she's inviting all these people to stay and live there? It's kind of, you know, you kind of have to wonder about that. But anyhow, so Jose had been going through a very difficult time in his life, many different things that had happened with him. He ends up accepting and he goes to Ben Hill and um, he has a lot of insight because he was living there and Summer was there and he got to know Summer. He saw the ins and outs, the daily life, what Summer was doing on a daily basis, the basic routine, the layout of the house. He also found out about what was going on for a while there. Don did return. They had an interaction together. They had a big fight. But we find out that Jose was there for a while living with Dawn. Um, I don't know how many days that was before Candace called the police to come and get Dawn. I don't know how, how long that was, but Jose tells us that there were some strange things going on. That he, he saw that actually Dawn was having his shower with Summer. And that Candace said that this is how you how Summer always has her bath. Now, Jose uses the word bath. He says that one day, one evening, I suppose, he wondered where Summer was. He was in the house and he called Summer and Candace said that she's having her bath with Dawn. Now, I think in that washroom, they say that the washroom was open without a door, but I think what they say is that there was a shower in there. I don't know if there's a bathtub, but they said there was a shower. So anyhow, so Jose tells us, Candace says, Summer is having her bath with Dawn. 
And then Jose freaks out. He kind of he jumps up and he gets Summer's uh, uh, towel, her bath towel, her pink towel. And he goes over and he calls her and she comes out of the shower and he wraps her up. And then Dawn comes out very angry. He's still all suds, you know, he has all the soap on him, sudsed up. And he's quite angry that Jose has, you know, called for Summer and interrupted him giving a bath together with Summer. And so it's all very strange. It's a very strange situation because you have the father and a wife and then you've got another man living there in a very small space because we know that there's that little kitchen there and right behind there there's the bar area which is the stairs and then right there behind there there's a washroom area and so it's very small and so you kind of have to wonder like what exactly happened you have kind of a stranger who is Jose and he's telling you he's wondering where summer is you know in this very small space and then having to jump up and he thinks it's all very strange he thinks that this is not good he thinks it's a it's a bad situation he doesn't approve of what was going on but at that time he doesn't think that it has to do with his mind he says he didn't think it was sa he just thought that it was very strange and that it shouldn't be happening you know and you would think i think most of us would think the mom would be giving her a bath. You know, sometimes a dad might be giving their child a bath as well, but not together. You know what I mean? Not having a bath together, especially with a, a grown adult man. With, with You know what I mean? So anyway, so it's, it's kind of strange, very strange actually, but on the afterthought. So Jose is saying now that he's looking back and he's saying he thinks that he should have called the cops right away when he saw that happened, but he didn't, and he kind of regrets that. And so I don't know if, you know, if if he's giving us 100% of what happened, you know, if he's there for a certain period of time, who was giving Summer or, or washing Summer before Dawn came back? What was going on before Dawn came back? Who is, who is, giving Summer, let's say, taking care of Summer, you know, clothing her and everything else. Obviously, we see that her hair was cut off. Possibly they didn't want to take care of her hair. Okay, so now back to Jose. He also notices a lot of other things. Now, there's something else with Jose. He said that when he was there at Ben Hill Road, living there, the whole time he was there, they had a blue couch at in the basement located where there's that door. He said that the door did not have a lock. And for that reason, they had a couch up against that door so that the kids could not get out, you know, kind of like a security. Instead of a lock, the couch was there to keep that door closed. And then when we found out about this case, we see that the door has a deadbolt style of lock. Candace said that it was locked at first. Then she said that she couldn't remember. Dawn said that it wasn't locked. So they kind of contradict. The statements are not um, the same. It's kind of changing. And so you kind of have to wonder about that lock. And could it be that that blue couch is important? Where is that couch? We have now summer has vanished and it seems that that couch has vanished. So does that have something to do with summer? Does that couch have any evidence on it? Is that a possibility that there's something which is on that couch, which is evidence? And again, where is it? Is that something that the investigators can look at? Why was it moved? These questions are all part of the investigation. It's very important that they find the answers for these questions. Now, another thing that you might have noticed that I had put up with Allison, that she said they had a truck there in front of the house where Summer's swing is. It was always parked right there. And she said that after Summer 
had disappeared, they moved that truck close to where the trailer is. And you can see that there's a photo there of it. It's parked there and there's no wheels. And in one photo, it's kind of covered over with, it looks maybe like plastic or maybe with a cloth or something. And there's stuff leaning against it. And there's many other vehicles, old rusted out vehicles without any wheels. Could be that they've taken the wheels off and sold them. You know, maybe the wheels are just broken and they use them for parts, maybe selling parts. I have no idea, but there's other vehicles there as well. But the thing that I'm wondering is, because I've seen so many other cases where things are hidden on a property and then they will construct something to cover a spot where something has been buried. There's one story that I had seen where they had constructed a fountain on top of an area in their yard. So they had buried remains in their yard and then they, you know, they covered it over. And then what they did is that they, they built kind of a platform out of cement. And on top of that, they constructed a whole fountain, a, a working fountain with water. All right. So imagine, let's say, um, maybe about a fountain, let's say a round fountain, maybe about six feet up in the air with water coming out of it. And so under that, underneath the cement, which is the platform, that is where the remains are hidden. And so, of course, no one coming into that yard is going to stumble onto remains. Another case that I'd seen, again, involving a backyard and remains, they had put pavers over top of an area, a large area covered with pavers, and then putting pots on top, big planters, and then filled with soil, and then they, you know, they might plant some flowers or whatever in those pots. Or another case that I'd seen that actually they had constructed kind of a deck on top of an area which was meant to be hidden, again, remains buried, and then on top of that deck, it's like a wooden deck, and they built a big gazebo on top of the wooden deck. You know, a gazebo where you go in there, it has like a roof. You can sit in there when there's rain or whatever. And so these are all ways of covering a spot that has remains, you know, on a property. And now with this case, with the Summer Wells case, they have so many different rusted out old trucks sitting on different areas of their land and specifically that one there which Allison brought attention to that she said it was it was moved right after summer went missing and so I know that the TBI had gone to the property and they say that they've searched it very well but if something has been uh, buried what happens oftentimes there's a way uh, to conceal the scent, okay, because there are certain dogs, cadaver dogs, that can smell remains of a cadaver, and they're trained to find the tiniest pieces of flesh from animals. That's how they train them, and they will bury little pieces of flesh and other things as well, and the dogs will have to find these pieces of remains. Now, some dogs are pretty awesome and they can find everything. Other dogs are not as good, you know, sometimes getting going astray and not finding everything. But they don't always find everything. Yet, there are ways of covering a scent. Criminals have ways. And one of the ways is that they can not only um, bind the remains or put it in, let's say, a bag or, or cover it with certain things with soil, but to conceal a scent of that flesh, which is decomposing, they can cover it with something like, for example, lime, and that will cover the scent. And then also you can cover it with cement and then again bury it and it will be much more difficult 
for a dog, for a scent dog, for a cadaver dog to actually find that bit of remains. Now, on top of that, if the remains have been destroyed even further, let's say if the remains have been burned in a fire and there's only a bit left over which they can't burn, you know, they're having a hard time burning the remains. And so what they do is they will then bury the rest which they're having a hard time burning. And so they will then cover that over and again with the lime or whatever it is that they use to cover the scent, they will bury it very deep and then cover it over and a dog is not going to find it. A cadaver dog is not going to find it. Now, there's the possibility that they might find something but there's a big chance that that dog is not going to find anything. And so here with this case, I really doubt that the TBI went to that property and actually lifted every one of those pieces of junk, all of those old trucks, that they went to the trouble of removing those trucks and digging beneath to see what's there. All right? you see that they have a huge area on the property. My guess is that spot is at least, I would say, let's say 10 by 10. It's a huge area you can see on the ground. And there's still some coals there. You can see those, those black remains where there's a fire. And, um, you know, you, you could burn just about anything there. It's a big spot. It's a very secluded property. No one can see what's happening there. Of course, you can see if there's a fire in the darkness. You can see that there's a fire. You can smell a fire. But there's no one up above looking down onto them. And there's no one on their level where they're living. So they're up above and they have some privacy where they are. They're free to move about without being seen. And they're, they're covered. They have the trees around them. So it's kind of like a curtain, which gives them more privacy to do whatever it is. And so they have the opportunity to um, cover up, to dig. You know, they moved the vehicle. They're free to do whatever they want. It's a big piece of land. And so there are more spots to hide remains. Actually, a stairs under this kitchen counter. You know you know what I mean? So even if someone breaks into that house, how are they going to know that there's a stairs there? They're not going to know. And so of course the abductor did not come in from the front unless it is, you know, someone who's lived there, who knows them. And if there is something which is blocking the way to from the back door, then how did that abductor get in? This is all just part of the questions that we all have with this case because it's, it's kind of hard to believe. With many cases of abductions, we find out that they happen at night and there will be, let's say, a window broken. There will be an access point where something is found something in, in the haste, in the rush of taking that child, there'll be something found, let's say a torn clothing, uh, a child taken out from a window and there is torn clothing. There will be, let's say, the mesh, the screen of a window which is cut. There will be something to show, let's say an open door, a door left open in the rush. They will not bother to close the door. They're just going to leave it open and they run. And so they, that's not the case here. Anyhow, so that is just more to think about. Uh, with these crazy um, types of perpetrators, and they're going to plan this in a way where, for example, they're going to do it at night because they have that extra bit of coverage. The darkness is their friend. They can move about in the darkness and they can hide. But this happened in broad daylight. You know, so if they are walking on the property, someone's going to see them. They have a chance of being seen. If they are running off with Summer under their arm, 
or carrying Summer the way we see Dawn holding her in the in the photo. That way it could be. But the point is that if it's during the day, then there's a chance of someone seeing them and seeing them when they have Summer in their car, when they're leaving the area. Whereas at night, it's less chance of being seen in the darkness. Now, recently I heard Dawn on YouTube and he has taken a very averse uh, dislike, huge, towards CPS. And he's saying that CPS has taken his kids and that he thinks that they might have taken Summer as well. That this abduction might have been done by CPS. But the way that he puts it, it is that possibly people who work alongside CPS in an unofficial way might have taken summer for their own financial gain because they make billions of dollars by stealing kids. And so he's kind of on the attack towards CPS. And that makes me think that CPS may be a big enemy of his. All right. He's got CPS really um, bugging him. All right. And so he has to go on the attack why? Because CPS probably has something against him. And so he's coming out fighting. He's being proactive because it could be they have something that they're holding on to him. He knows what it is that they have against him. And he wants to get us, the public, onto his side and against CPS so that when they come out, we're kind of like iffy about them. We don't trust them. He doesn't want us to trust CPS. And so I wonder what it is that CPS has against him. It's it's got to be something and the thing I don't I didn't hear anything when I heard the lady's interview specifically with Leslie. She's saying that the calls according to her there were so many many calls. How many times they called CPS. But it was because of Candace. But of course, there could be someone else who was calling CPS as well. Uh, maybe more so having to do with Dawn. Um, you know, we don't know at this point, but it all seems very odd. There's a lot there. And they say there's that, you know, that saying that everyone says when there's smoke, there's fire. But it's like there's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of little smokes around here, you know, and it's, it's like also like the tip of the iceberg. We're seeing like the tip there's little tips everywhere so there's got to be possibly like a huge iceberg under under the surface and i always wonder i think to myself okay candace is probably afraid of him candace and the grandmother they're probably afraid of him they can't really speak too much they're not saying much um as if they've been forced to be quiet and he's he's always talking all the time and we know that there was the complaint that she made that she was afraid that he's hurting her and the kids. And then she had to back up and take that back. You know, I, I guess she was forced to do that. But I wonder, you know, if, if she was safe, if she had kind of a safe haven, I, I always thought that she might come out and say something. But it hasn't happened to this point. So I really don't know. Now, let me know what you all think about it. And let me know if you think that, you know, this is a situation where she can't talk, uh, where she's forced to stay quiet. You know, is one of them going to, you know, stand up for themselves? And just the first person who goes is, is probably going to have it better you know, if they if they just come out and uh, help out the TBI to, to clear up the situation. I really don't know. But obviously, for some reason, they are sticking together. And that makes me lean towards the whole accident happening. Now that I did get a very interesting comment, someone commented, and they said basically that they thought this happened, in their theory, uh, much earlier before, you know, maybe a week before then yes, I could see that his mother would want to, to keep him in the clear and kind of try to cover things up. And that would answer 
for why they have so many contradictions in their stories. They didn't quite get it right. Anyhow, so let's have a listen to Jose because he has a lot of insight into what happened. He was living there. He got to see Summer's life, her, her everyday life, what she was doing on a daily basis. He got to know Allison. He got to know Candace. He says that the grandmother did have a lot of medications, but that she did not drink. Grandis did not ever drink, and she didn't like all the drinking that was going on. That is what Jose said. With Candace, uh, he says that, um, yes, she was drinking and, and after five. And um, for me, I think that uh, could be, um, you know, that would, would be a big problem when a mother is getting drunk then she can't protect her kids. That is a huge problem. If a mother is is drunk and, let's say, falling asleep, inebriated, incapacitated, I know they talk of, about a lot of other stuff. I don't know exactly what they were doing, but how can you protect your child if you are not awake, if you're not alert? And that is a problem. And I think it has to do with, well, you've got to ask that question with this case. All right, so let's together listen to this information and please just comment below. I'm always interested to read all of your comments. As we all do, we all kind of just brainstorm together and everyone gets in on it. We find out what's going on, putting the pieces together because there's so many pieces, figuring things out, seeing what fits, what doesn't make sense. A lot of you have some very interesting insights into this case. All right, so let's have a listen to Jose. They seemed real nice. And around what time in the evening was this? I don't even remember. Okay, that's cool. I that's honest, cool. I honestly don't remember. That's that's cool. So at some point, do you make it up to the the house up there? Yep. And what was your? And I remember your, that my first was the driveway. <laughs> that yeah, driveway was my, is something, isn't it? Oh my lord. <laughs> so and and it it was crazy because Candace tried to go up in the Silverado and, and the tail kept kicking sideways. And um her mother yelled at her, didn't I tell you you gotta put it in four wheel drive? And hearing that I'm like, what you need four wheel drive to make it up this driveway? Because I was expecting a paved driveway. I wasn't expecting a driveway like that, you know? So she wound up, you know, reversing the truck. She put it in four wheel and romped it right through, like just put pedal to the metal just to get up to the hill. So as we're pulling up, I remember just seeing the grass taller than summer. Like it was, and the llama were sitting there, and they were saying, "Yeah, Hunter is supposed to be doing that." And he's like, "Yeah, but that's a lot, you know." And he was right; it really was a lot. And he was like, "And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing nothing, so I can help if you want a little help." And he was like, "Yeah, that'll be great." I was like, "Yeah, why not? Because it'll keep my mind off of things. Just trying to keep my mind busy." So um, we wind up pulling up, and then I remember seeing uh, Candace's mother's camper and the fridge. And then they had a couple of other things like tires and things like that, like in a little pit or something. And uh, Candace was saying once in a while they'll light that up and burn trash there during the nighttime so nobody would tell, you know, with the black smoke and things like that. And um, as we get to the house. Okay, so that is kind of interesting. He's talking about the fire, that they would do that at night. Sometimes they would have a fire to burn whatever it is, and there would be black smoke. But of course, at night, no one's going to really see, except for, you know, seeing that somebody is, has a fire going, and I'm sure that's okay in the country. People do that. But just think about how secluded this property is. And 
they have the opportunity to burn whatever they want in that huge fire pit. Now we've heard of other cases where people use fire in order to get rid of evidence, to destroy evidence and remains. And so you can see that unlike someone who's living in the city, here they have the possibility, they have the wherewithal to make a fire. Now that doesn't mean they did that, but you can see that they do have a fire pit. All I could remember where these dogs just swarmed the, the truck and they just barking. And I'm just looking at them like, oh, and you know, Hunter's laughing at me. He's like, oh, they, they're they all punks, they, you know, but he didn't say it like that. He said a bad word, but he was like, they all bark and no bite. <laughs> and then Candace was like, that's funny because they know you. They don't know Jose, you know? And I was like, oh man, I might get bit by one of these dogs. And I wind up getting off of the truck. And when I got off, I had all four of them like in front of me showing teeth, growling. And Candace and her mother had to like yell at the dog to leave. Now, the reason why it's so important to consider the dogs is because you have to wonder how does a stranger get up there without getting the dog's attention? And we see every time they have, let's say, there's an interview with Grandis and that um, was done. And so you hear the dogs barking in the background on that interview. When Chris McDonough went up to the property, the dogs surrounded uh, his truck. They were there. There was tons of dogs when he came out. And they were, they're always there coming up. As soon as somebody comes to the driveway, in fact, the dogs come up. We heard from Allison that at one point she was feeding the dogs when Candace and Dom were away. And the dogs would just swarm. As soon as they got there, the dogs would come flying out of the, the bushes and the trees. And, you know, even the grandmother, Grand Bun, said that they were always barking. So everyone is contradicting what Dawn has told us. Dawn is saying to fit his scenario, he says that the dogs just weren't there that day, even though he was not there to see if the dogs were there. Leave me alone. Um, so you, um, then in from the there, Jose, who's me? in the truck with you? And, and then, I, yeah, in the, in the truck in with the, me, it was, uh, okay, so in the front seat, it was, uh, Candace, her mother, and Allie. And then in the back seat, it was, uh, Summer Hunter, Hunter's sister, and me. Okay, where where were the boys? If you knew. At home, matter later, of fact. Later on, if you found out later. Yeah, they were at home. Okay. So That's where they you were. When you pulled up, were the boys there? Yes. They were in the house, actually. And, and, Okay, and where did you guys park? Uh, she parked like right next to, uh, right next to the house, but a little after the porch. Okay, and when you got out, the dogs obviously did their thing. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened next? Uh, we got out. Um, Hunters took summer out. They all got out and they all started walking in the house. They asked me if I needed any help with my luggage. I was like, no, I just picked it. I, I was able to carry it on my own. And I took it and they was like, don't be afraid of the dogs because that was my main fear that they were going to bite me. And um, they just kept saying, don't worry about the dogs. And then as we go up to that front door, they had those center block things in that yellow, look like a scaffold type deal there for like, you know, for you to hold with your hand. And I saw that and I was like, that's dangerous, you know, especially with kids, you know? And she's like, yeah, my husband is doing work around the house. We got to fix this eventually. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I just 
climbing up the stairs and I remember walking through that front room and all you can see is it, just a wreck everywhere, clothes all over the place, cups, uh, empty water bottles, soda bottles, just on, on top of the tables, um, the TV stand, movies piled up. And then they had two uh, clean-sized mattresses laid out on the floor, and those had the pillows and blankets, plus a couple of the kids' clothes was there. They had a, in what a, rooms? A in what rooms were those? Ma- in what rooms were those mattresses, Jose? The first room when you enter. Okay. Yeah. How many? How many mattresses? It, and it how many mattresses? Mat- it was two. Okay. Okay. And right next to each other. All right. Were there bunk beds there at that time? No, absolutely not. Okay. Then, then what happened? Uh, this is the first time you go in, me to, right? Yes. Then they were telling me to come into the kitchen. Who was telling and then, you? You know, you. Uh, Ali, Candace, and the grandmother, they were like, come in, come into the kitchen, come sit down. We're not going to bite, you know, like they were laughing, you know, just cracking jokes and stuff. And where I was already depressed, though. Right. Running around. Summer went right, summer went straight to the swing, uh, and the boys was outside with her, and they were there just playing. Okay, um, was it daytime then? Yeah, it still was daytime. Okay. That I do remember. Okay, then what happened? Uh, Then I went into the kitchen with them. They cleared out the table a little bit, and I had sat down. I had asked for water. They had given me water. And then I was like, oh, could I use your bathroom? And they was like, yeah. And then that's when Ali had told Hunter to show me where it was, you know, to take me to the bathroom. All right. So with uh, Jose, when he was there, the washroom was actually different from what we see in the more recent photos. Now, at first, I think when Chris McDonough went there, they hadn't finished the wall. But then afterwards, when they wanted to get the boys back, I think they started doing more uh, drywall and they fixed the stairway where we see they had that bar area and they put the fence up. But what Jose is saying is that when he was there, there wasn't even a wall. That they had two dressers, one stacked up, one on top of the other, and there was some kind of a blanket or something on top of that. And so I'm not sure exactly also if it's a shower or a tub, but there was no uh, door either. So I guess you can hear, definitely you can hear what's going on because it's a very small space. So there's no privacy as far as visual and then um, everything, you can hear everything that's going on as well. So that's when I wind up getting up. You walk past that little bar thing that they have and right there, there was these two big six straw dressers one on top of the other with a sheet over it. And Hunter was like, the bathroom's right here. And he just pointed. So I go and when I look, it's just the toilet, the shower, and the sink. No walls, no doors at all. And I was like, whoa. And they were like, oh, don't worry. Nobody's going to go back there, you know? And I was like, okay. So I just wound up using the bathroom. And I'm just standing there like, where's the wall at? There's no door, you know. And then I noticed the water tank heater that they had up in the ceiling and the pipes coming from. So it's kind of strange because we find out, you know, through this case that Don and Candace, both of them know how to do drywall. Or at least Don does. That is his job. And then Candace helps him as well to finish up I guess maybe sanding or whatever. And so the thing is that how can a person um, have their house where you've got a washroom without a wall 
without a door, without a wall. And that is the person's profession. You know, have you ever, have any of you ever had to go to the washroom where there's no, like no door and no wall and you just, you know, I mean, I've never really seen that before. I know there's like third world countries and I would suspect that even there they want some privacy. So I, I don't understand why didn't they make an effort just to have that basic, you know, you want to have, for example, a, a kitchen counter, you want a sink, you probably want to have a fridge and a stove, no matter how small it is. And then you want to have a washroom where there's privacy. So, and he's saying that, you know, by the time Jose got there, they'd already been living there with three kids. So the years had, had gone by and, you know, and so he's there living there as well. And I don't know if they'd planned to fix it, but it seems, it just seems strange. It doesn't really make sense that uh, Don wouldn't put the effort in to just get that done. Let's say over a weekend, have a project for a weekend and just put up some, you know, some uh, couple of two by fours, get some of that chipboard and some, you know, some drywall and just nail it up. I just, I don't get it. The ceiling and stuff. And I just started to observe, you know, just to look around and stuff. And then I noticed their closet and all the clothes that was there. They had a a, a BB rifle there laying up against um, the sink in the closet. Um, I used the bathroom, turned right back around and came right back to them. And I didn't even notice the stairs at this time yet. You know, because I just walk right back. And then I was like, can I put my stuff away? Because the kitchen was clustered already. And I had a pretty big suitcase with me. And that's when Candace was like, yeah, come with me. And I was like, okay. And then I seen her walk to the bar. And I'm like, there's stairs there? And she's like, oh, yeah, my husband's six foot, you know, he fits down here. Same thing, basically what she told you. If he can fit down here, so can you. And But I'm wide. You know, I'm a hefty guy and I'm like, oh my God. And then Hunter was like, my mom fits through there, you know, we all do. And I was like, okay. So that's when I have walked down there, down those steps. My, my the jacket I had on, it had on one of the nails. It didn't rip it though, but it got caught on one of the nails. And I was like, that's dangerous. And I started to walk down the steps. Then I noticed the TV there. And I noticed a blue couch in front of the door. And then their mattress was to the back of that room. And they had, it was on top of center block. And Who, was who's their, who's their mattress? Oh, who's their mattress? Um, Candace and her husband. Okay, go ahead. And then um, Candace was like, this was where you could, this is this will be your room, Jose. And then when I looked over to the right, the bunk beds were there. Okay. And I just walked in there and they had the bunk beds there. And they also had another little mattress there too. But it looked more like a toddler's mattress, you know? But it didn't look like anyone slept on it. I think it was just something for them to sit on when they were playing and stuff like that. So so I just went. I put my luggage up against the wall, and then I just went right back upstairs. Were there to toys down there when you first got in? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. After yeah. It was full of toys. Did it, it look was, like a toy room? a lot of toys. Uh, yeah, pretty much so. It looked like a typical kid's room, you know, like just a room for children. Well, that room for me didn't look like a typical kid's room, but, you know, I mean, kind of You know, with that, all the right? toys and, yeah, and with all the toys and stuff, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. So you thought it was a, a playroom of some sort. When um, Yeah. Did, did they describe um, anything about that room or the parents' room at that point? Did Candace... Is Candace down there with you, showing you around, basically giving you the tour? Yes. Yes. Okay. She is. Okay. 
And she was telling me that that bottom door never gets opened at all. The couch always stays there because it doesn't fully lock. You know, she had informed me of that. So the windows didn't have no tents in it at all. You could see through. Like, you could look outside and they could look inside as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's... uh... But I guess, yeah, I think because the grass was so tall, you couldn't notice it. But once you mow that lawn, it's pure sunlight used to come in through there. Right. So let's go back upstairs now. You're upstairs um, from the Mm -hmm. dungeon, is what I call it. Okay. Okay. And this is uh, like the first night or you're just kind of getting to know everybody. Uh, At what point uh, does, is Allie staying there at this time, by the way? Yes. uh, She was actually uh, staying with her kids for the weekend. Okay. And where are they sleeping? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Where do they end up sleeping? Upstairs. Like they all bunched up upstairs. <laughs> okay. Like a big way. slumber party, you could say. Yeah, it was just like a big slumber party. Okay. And just all who's of them pre- bunched up there. Is Allie's mom there? Yeah, but she slept in her camper. Oh, I mean, that's Once Candace's in a while mom. She... Is that Allie's mom or Candace's yeah. mom? No, Candace's mom. Okay. Uh, how about she Allie's slept mom? In the... She wasn't there. Okay. Okay. I didn't meet uh, Ali's mother and grandmother and great grandmother until I was there for a little while, probably maybe like a week or two before I actually met them. So they had been they had been kicking it there before you even got there. Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yes. So did everybody kind of have a uh, yeah. sleeping, you know, quarters uh, staked out? Grandma? Yeah, you know, as well say, yes. Okay. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Okay. And just like a big, you know, crash house uh, or other one? Excuse me? Is this like a big crash house? Are there other people coming and going? You know, I mean, not that first night, no. but uh, the more you stayed there, were there no. other cars coming up there? Were there, you know, other things going on? No, no, nope, not uh, at all. Was not Candace was getting there. hammered at night? Was Candace getting drunk at night? Yeah, after five and o'clock. So every night after five, is it? Or or just a few nights after five, you tell me. And probably like a few nights, but as you know, her and Dawn started to get into the fights over the phone. It started to become every single night. When so I was got Dawn there, calling every, every night? night. Was Dawn calling was she, every well, night? She would call. She was calling him, not the other way around. He didn't call. She called him. <laughs> okay. Okay. And what what was your impression of that? Why did she have to do that? Yeah, I most of the time that she called them was for money to buy food for the house, and then they'll wind up arguing because he's pushing for her to move up to Utah, and she she'll drop the f bombs left and right, and no, I'm not going. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so those are basically their fights there. Okay, and what about the kids during this time? Who's uh, during all the the flowing of the alcohol and all the? I'm assuming there's got to be some dope involved in this too, right? Somewhere. No, I mean, no. Is there any marijuana? No. And anybody smoking nope. marijuana up there? Nope. No, okay. just alcohol and cigarettes. Okay. Alcohol and cigarettes. And yeah. so go ahead. That was all they were doing. Okay. And you say they, who's but they? We will all be watching them. It wouldn't be like 
none of us are watching them, but the kids had their own routines at the time. You know, they watched their own shows. Uh, they would play on their phone, on the video games, or they'll go outside and play. You know, and when they were hungry, they would just come in, we're hungry. And then Candace would be like, well, grab a pizza and put it in there. You know, you know what to do. And they would just do it themselves. Jose, was there any, so dope aside, were there any, were there any opioids? I mean, were they taking pills on a, and drinking? I mean, I, 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 I take your word for what you're saying, but I, I would find it hard to believe that they weren't doing anything other than just alcohol and cigarettes. Oh no. In front of me, that's all they was. I didn't see them taking so no they, pills or anything. Gotcha. The okay. only one who took pills was uh Candace's mother, but she had a lot of pills, like all oh, whole bunch of different medications. So I'm thinking cholesterol, blood pressure, you know, all these other, you know, because I have family that take multiple pills. So he would come out with like a little bag and it's a whole bunch of different pills. And she will always say, I have to take this damn stuff every day and I don't really like it. You know, it makes me feel weird. And that was her main complaint. But she didn't drink. Candace's mother was the only one that did not drink. She did she would not drink at all. She will always fight if anyone drank. And, and Chris, let me let me just ask you really fast too. Was your experience similar to Jose's when it came to the dogs when you first arrived on that property? Yeah, they were everywhere. They came out of the woods, barking and somewhat yeah, aggressive. They came right at the truck. They came right at me, right when I got out, and that's why Karen stayed in the truck. Right. right. So. So yeah, he that, so he hit that one on the head. Yeah, that piece of the puzzle. Um, so it, that's a great that was a great question too, Josh. You, you got more on that? Go ahead. Well, I, I just it, it uh, you know we talk about how they say stranger abduction, mm -hmm. and it seems to me that if a stranger walked up on that hill, he would have been greeted the same way both of you were, were greeted. Oh, absolutely, believe that. What a, that's a hundred percent correct. They would have definitely went up to whoever it was. The only way they wouldn't come up to you like that is if they knew who you were. Right. And how long did it take the dogs to get used to you? A couple, a few days, okay. so, two, three days. Yeah. Strangers aren't walking. Yeah, up I, I even hills. made the. Yeah, I remember telling Candace, "You need a zoo license." I mean, there were there were cats dogs you know they were everywhere they were everywhere in there okay and so even if they, you, know, you make you, it they bark i'm oh, sorry chris no go ahead say it again i was uh jose even if they knew you and you came up would they bark when like cars would come home and stuff no if they knew who you were they wouldn't bark but they would approach the car okay they would approach you but they wouldn't like growl or or bark you know so while you were there, uh, Jose, just kind of uh, shifting back here, uh, the breakdown of where w everybody's drinking, at what point would, uh, you know, the tolerance level kick in and everybody pass out? I would be the first one to pass out. You so were? That, the, <laughs> yeah, I'd be the first one to knock out. I was you know going through a lot yeah so i just went downstairs and just slept but it's like 8 30 9 at night i'm in bed already ready to conk out and they would still be up in the kitchen laughing you know playing music kids running around having fun you know where, where are the children are. where are the children at this point just running Upstairs around in the, in the front in the front room playing yeah watching tv what kind of video games did they play um one of them was like a racing game on on the phone um 
Another one was a puzzle game or something like that. But I heard there was a couple of more, but I never, like, really was into phone games or anything like that. So I really didn't pay it mine. But the okay. boys mainly played their racing game on the phone. What kind of games did the kids play that you Excuse me? You asked what kind of games they played? Yeah, meaning outside games, kids' games. Oh, oh hide and go seek. Uh, uh, they played on the swing, tag. They played with their soccer ball. Uh, the boys would throw their footballs around sometimes. You know, and they really wanted to ride their bikes. You know, that was when I knew they had dirt bikes when I found that out. But Candace wouldn't let them drive it. She kept saying, you have to wait for your dad to come back. And that was their main focus was their bikes. But those were the games they played typically. So they wanted to get on those dirt bikes. Mm-hmm. Very and when much. you saw them play hide and seek, what would they do? Where would they go? In the house, outside, in, in Candace's mother camper, in the fridge. I remember the first time I saw someone in that fridge, it freaked me out. Tell me about that. You know, I thought the fridge locked. Okay, so I was sitting outside towards uh Candace's mother camper and there was like this little crate thing there and I was just sitting there smoking a cigarette and I could I remember the boys running outside and they're like Jose did you see Summer and I'm like no why oh we're playing hide and seek and I was like oh okay I was like well I didn't see her maybe she's in the house and they're like no we checked in the house so I got up and I said, so she's out here somewhere hiding? And they're like, yeah, we got to find her. And I was like, isn't it like dangerous? And like, would she leave real far? Because this is the first, first time they're playing this, you know, and I'm finding out. And they're like, no, usually she's around here hiding behind a tree or something. And I was like, oh, okay. So as the boys start walking to the shed, to check over towards that way. All I did was turn my head and I could see Summer peeking out of the door of the fridge. And I was like, what is she doing? And I wind up walking over to it and she had closed it. And I was afraid that it what locked. What side, left or right? Open. What, what's, Jose, what side, left the or right? Fridge? Yeah. The fridge? It was, yes. uh, well, where I was sitting at, I'm facing the house. It would have been to my left. Okay, but what side is she peeking out? When you say to your left, I need oh, some reference. Peeking. Okay, so, uh, she's peeking out of the door. She like she opened the door. She's peeking it because you know when you open the fridge door, it opens up through the bottom. So she just cracked it and stuck her head out and looked over. Okay, do you remember if it was the left or the right door? I don't remember which door it was. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Then what happened? Uh, she wanted to peek out, and I wound up walking over there, and I'm like, Summer? And the boys was like, oh, you found her. Oh, she's in there again? And that's what they said. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm looking at that, and I was like, that doesn't lock. And they're like, no, it's broken. Like, we always use that. And I was like, oh, okay. So Who, she went running out. Is that the boy uh, saying this? All of them. Yeah, the boys too were saying that. So they used it too. Them boys okay. used to fit in there. I don't know how they did it, but they fit in there. Okay. And what about uh, yeah. Candace? What is what is her reaction during all of this? Or where is she? What's going on? Inside of the house, sitting on the yeah. kitchen table. Okay, sitting at the kitchen table. And is she aware that they're that Summer's been hiding into that fridge before? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
How do you know that? Because she used to always tell me, go play hide and go seek, go outside, go play. You know? Okay. And she knew that she already had been in that fridge a few times. Okay. And she was like, I used to argue with her, but, you know, the fridge opens. Ain't nothing bad going to happen to her in there. So I just gave up arguing with her about it. So you argued with her about her hiding in that fridge? Is that what you're saying? No, no. That Candace said she gave up arguing with her about hiding in the fridge. Oh, so the mom and mom and daughter had a conversation in the past. Did you hear that? Have you ever heard that? No. Oh, did you believe a conversation? it? Yeah. About? About Summer having a conversation with Candace about hiding in the fridge? Oh, I, I did. The way she was saying it, I believe that she did talk to Summer about the fridge. Okay. But then okay. Candace was like, she just gave up. And she was like, she's not going to get hurt in there. I already checked the fridge. Everything's fine. You know, it opens, closes. It, it doesn't lock, lock. And I, okay. You know, I really didn't think nothing of it. Okay. When these when the kids were playing uh, hide-and-go-seek and things like that, uh, just around the house, uh, how rough were they with each other? Not real rough, but just like normal kids. Accidents happened, you know, maybe one, um, like uh, one time Wyatt was running real quick. And he tried, and he was running around to hook around the corner of the house. And he ran into Whalen. Whalen wound up falling and scraping his knee. That's like the worst I've seen. So, okay, so they play outside. Uh, it, where else did the, the children used to hide that you're aware of? Uh, in uh, Candace's mother camper in the bathroom. <laughs> Say it again. I, in in Candace's mother's camper inside of the bathroom. Okay. Is that one of the cabinets? Yeah. No, no, it's a bathroom. Okay. She just hid it. Yeah. She hid in. The, she hid in the bathroom. Yeah, because that was uh, Candace's mother's, uh, like, storage. She didn't use the bathroom there. She used the bathroom in the house. So she converted her bathroom from the camper into, like, a storage unit. And she had a lot of stuff stored in there. And she used to argue with Summer about that because she was afraid that, you know, Summer knocked something down and, you know, it comes toppling on top of her. Over, uh, it sounds like the kids, uh, you know, are just kids and they're out running around playing on the property. Yeah. This, uh, tell me about the swing. Is that her uh, favorite place to go or what's your opinion? Oh yeah. Summer. That's her go-to. That's, she loved that swing a lot. Constantly on the swing. Always. Always. And then. No shoes and no shirt. Mm -hmm. I could tell you that right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. No shoes and no shirt sitting on that swing, just swinging away. And if she wanted to go higher, she would ask one of us to do it. And most of the time it was me doing it, just pushing her. And she would just laugh and thank you and, you know, go higher. And then she would ask me to twist her, you know, on the, that. And she's like, keep going, keep going. And then she would tell me, let go. And then, you know, it would swing around and spin. And she would be holding on, screaming, laughing. And then, you know, if I felt like she was going to fall, I would just go and grab her, like pick her up, and then place her on the ground. And she's like, whoa, you know, and she's moving around. And I said, again, Jose, again. <laughs> uh, he was a bundle of joy. What was Hunter's interaction with the children? He was the same way. 
with all of them. He played hide and go seek with them too. He played tag with them. He kicked the soccer ball with the boys. With Summer, it was the swing too with her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what was the reaction <laughs> of um, H's mom to him doing that? Or was it, I mean, or was just. Was it just a casual situation where kids are just playing, or what was your takeaway on that? Yeah, that's what I take it as, a casual thing, just kids playing, just having fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No other way than that. Okay, Most of the time, that's all they were doing was having fun, always laughing and yelling, you know, loud kids. That's what they were. Jose, did you find it odd that they offered you a place to stay a strange man in a house full of kids when there was, uh, when Dawn is in Utah? Did you find that odd at all? A, a little bit. Yeah. I did in a way, but you know, when Andrew had spoke to them, I guess that's what you know, alleviated their worries about me. Because yeah. Andrew's the one who actually spoke to Allie for me before I actually spoke to them. And that's when Andrew had introduced me to each of them. So it was Andrew that that vouched for yeah. you. And, yeah. and then when you initially got there, you, you see the state of the house. Uh, was there anything mm-hmm. in you telling you to get out of there? Excuse me? Was there anything inside you telling you to get out of there when you saw the the condition of the house, or were you just desperate for a place to stay? Oh, no. When I seen the house, it was like, I need to get out of here, but I didn't know where to go. Right. Yeah, you know, I was stuck in the woods, basically. Sure. I didn't know nothing. Not even my cell phone worked there at all. There was no signal. Candace was the only one who had a signal, and it was lucky if it was one bar. What was the carrier? Uh, I don't even know. Mm -hmm. I never even asked her that. I never thought of asking her what was the carrier at all. Did her did grandma have a phone? Did did grandma? No. No. Not at that time. No. Okay. Nope, did anybody else? Did Allie have a phone? Yeah, Allie had a phone. Hunter had a phone. Okay. They both had phones, and their phones didn't work at all. Did yours? There did you no have one? Video. No. Yeah, I had my cell phone, and it was dead too to the world. <laughs> it was like no connection. The only way we got connection was when we went into Peace Corps. That was when our cell phone services kicked in and it would go crazy because and, they didn't go into King's Court every single day. Sure. You know, and who like, is, go ahead. It was like like every other day or maybe every two days. So when we would get to the spot where I guess it was by the church, right after you pass that church, all our stuff. All our cell phones are ding, 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 you know, just going crazy. We're like, whoa. You know, and, and and who's and your carrier? Videos. Who was your carrier back then? Mine was straight talk through Walmart. Oh, okay. So you kind of had by the minutes kick it up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had the, the unlimited plan for every month, and it was on auto pay, so they took the money out automatically. I didn't have to keep going to buy a card and putting minutes. They just took it off my card to pay for it. Okay. Was there Wi-Fi? Was there internet in the house? No, absolutely not. Not at that time that I was there. Okay. So at some point, um, are you during all of this time and how long are you there at the house in terms of what you remember what's your timeline i don't really know now that i'm thinking about it felt a lot like i was there for months 
that's exactly what it felt like to me. Okay. Yeah, ballpark it. I mean, I, I heard you say near six months once. And that's why I said it felt like months. No sense of time at all. It's country life. They, it, it truly is a country life over there. It's not a city life. Sure. You know? So it was all new to me. All of it. The area was new to me. The way, you know, the, even people telling me good morning, I found weird. You know, I'm from New York. Everybody's uptight and with an attitude. I come here to Tennessee. It's good morning and bless you and all these things. And I'm looking at them like they're weird. Well, that's the great folks of Tennessee. And this is why people love summer so much, right? They really do mm -hmm. care. They care about people and they care about children. And I, I know that, you know, you got stuck in the middle of this thing uh, based on you know, all the information that's available to everybody. And it's, it is, it's a culture shock uh, to understand the people of the Southeast. I mean, they're, they're really super great people. And then there are, you know, other people that, you know, we just, they don't, they don't get the understanding that is necessary because they've not lived the type of life that they live down there. Poor to, on on all of those which you have and you do and and i'm you know i think that's great and the fact that you've come forward now uh after all this time you know what what when was the first time you were interviewed by the fbi you there We lose him. Uh, well, he says he's still on the oh, line. Up I hear you now. Okay. Yeah, okay. you were breaking up. Uh -huh. yeah, no worries. Right, wait a minute. Why are they breaking up? Uh -huh. No worries, Amigo. What? When? When was the first time you were interviewed by the FBI? They, uh, from what I remember, they said she had been missing about seven, eight days, I believe. From what I can remember. Okay, and, and they that's... have went to my, and they have went to my son's house looking for me. And eventually, they found you, and you had a conversation with them, correct? Correct, absolutely. Okay, and you told them everything that you rem you recalled. Yep. Yep. But. It was, as I said, their main focus was on Don and Candace. That if I felt they would ever do any harm to Summer. And that was the impression that I got from their questioning. And what did you tell them? I told them not, not Candace. And I don't think that Don you know, would have at that time. Because, you know, even though me and him bumped heads and, and all that other stuff, but as far as to, like, physically abuse her, no. I I told him, no, I don't think anything like that, like, kill her like or, or hurt her in that way, no. Well, when you first heard that she went missing, and and how how long after she went missing did you hear about it? Was it when TBI contacted you or the FBI? Yeah, when the FBI contacted me was when I knew. And that was eight, and that was first, eight days. Yeah, seven eight days, I believe she was missing. Mm -hmm. And um, and what was your reaction? I oh, first I'm gonna tell you the first thing I told the FBI was, did she get out of the house again? That was the first first line that came out of my mouth and they're like excuse me and i said did she get out of the house again and they're like wait a minute she used to get out the house i said yeah all the time i said why do you think the blue couch is in front of the door in the basement i told them that and they're like a blue couch i said yeah in the basement it would be in front of that door because there was no lock there. She could walk in and out. 
But she knew how to open the lock in the front door too because there wasn't no deadbolt there. It was just the regular knob that you just turned the little switch and that was it. So she knew how to open that. How did the uh, deadbolt get on that door, do you know? Uh, I think they probably put it there. <laughs> and that's way after I was gone. Because when I was... When I was there, that was not there. Just like the wall that they have that's covering that bathroom right now, that was not there when I was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those bunk beds in that front room, that was not there when I was there. Those bunk beds are virtually brand new. Uh, Jose, if, if Summer did, in fact, tend to wander outside like you said that she did what what do you think and i know this is speculation but why why would don and candace say that she never did that because uh, they say because that they knew they would get in trouble that's why okay and they and they knew it's not just me who told them something ali said something even candace's mother said something about her getting out of the house we all told them it wasn't just me, you know? It was a concern for all of us. You know, like, how the hell she's getting out of the house? Like, I thought you locked the door. Well, uh, Summer knows how to unlock the door. Well, what, are you, now you telling us this? You know, like, you need to watch her more often, more closely, you know? But it wasn't just me who told her. It was her mother told her and Ali as well. And when she would be outside that we finally realized she was outside, if Hunter was there, he'd be the first one to run out the door for her. You know? And he would just run right out the door and he would go after her. And then she'll run and laughing, you know, like, like it's funny and Hunter's like, it's not funny. It's not funny. You know, things could bad could happen to you. You know, we love you. What are you doing? Don't do this. You know, and she was just joyous. She's just a curious kid. That's all. Yeah. I think a lot of people understand that about her. Uh, there's yeah, no question scary, about it. But scary. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, but what, what else drives what drives Dawn? Uh, I mean, you had some observations of some. You know, there was some weird that you mentioned. Uh, and, you know, what about, you know, the abuse uh, situation from anybody, if anything? Uh, even you raised some red flags, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but when I walked into that house, I mean, that house just screamed uh, all kinds of dysfunction. I mean, alcohol, drugs, a- SA. I mean, th- that, you know, just check each box and keep moving down the hallway. And then when you get to the dungeon and you see what's on the TV, uh, I, I mean, shocked. but I could tell you that wouldn't, that wasn't Candace watching that. Well, that's I don't know who TV was watching it. I don't know. No, but I don't that's know. Dawn all over. That's the type of thing he used to watch. Okay, fine. That's him. And, and so the question then is when Don comes back from Utah and you're there, that, that turns into, you know, a problem pretty quickly. I mean, yeah. to the point where he goes to yeah. jail, right? Mm-hmm. Felon in possession of a handgun. Yeah. Yep, you're still there, yeah, but correct. then you event shortly thereafter you bail, you leave. Yeah, I just left. Yeah, but in between that time, it, while he was home, you saw some actions that you even you had described. I I heard you say it, just yes, was kind um, of pretty problematic, yeah, and I I don't want to go into yes. it, but mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. You know, okay, and then, the more and more I, I spoke out, the more and more he didn't like it. That was the problem because okay. no one spoke out. 
and this is why I felt that they were afraid of him. Who's and they? I just um, Candace and her mother. Okay, okay. But now, in retrospect, looking back, when you first tell the FBI after seven days, there's no way. Did you include the SA allegations or the the observations? No. How come? Uh, I really wasn't even thinking about that, honestly. Okay. I, and that wasn't even a thought in my mind because I didn't think he was doing any SA to Summer when he was in the bath with her. I just mm-hmm. found it disgusting to take a bath with your daughter. You know? Mm-hmm. 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 That was my <laughs> my trigger there. Like no, I don't think so. But as far and as you confront, and you no. confronted him, right? Yes, you conf- he, he, yes, yes. I took Summer out of that shower. Yes, I did. I stood there with her pink princess towel because that was her favorite towel, and she always used it. And I and I remember that towel because that towel would get washed like every other day because Summer would always be dirty because she was outside playing so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she you know, will I just be full of dirt. I, I'm just curious, Jose. Though you know, in in full transparency, you know the fact that you have witnessed potentially something that even caused you as a father internally to say, you know what, that DLR right does not look right, and mm-hmm. you intervene, and that intervention causes a major disruption between you and a father and a daughter and children and all this other stuff. And then this child goes missing, you know, down the road. Now, mind you, you're gone. Okay. Mm-hmm. I get, I get that piece brother. Okay. But at the same time, when, when the cops and the authorities come to you and you mentioned, okay, did she go out? They had to have asked about, was there any type of observations or problems in that home that, you could at least, you know, give us a little more intel into. And now maybe this was just your mindset at the time. And I don't want to, you know, disrespect you. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting you. No. I'm just saying, no. I'm, I'm just no. saying, right. you know, this just doesn't, it, you know, I don't know if it fits. Does that make sense in terms of it? It, it is, it is what it is, but if that's what you did and that's the truth, okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay. But they didn't but, ask me nothing like that. That okay, I they didn't go you, down that route. They didn't. No, they did not. Absolutely okay. not. It was okay. more like they felt like they did bodily harm to her. Got it. Okay, that's so where I got. That's what I got from the from their questioning to me about them. Yep. Absolutely. Fair enough. Fair enough. And the, and and I can see that unfolding just the way it did. Just what you're saying. Uh, been there many times. Uh, and it has fallen into that point. So in retrospect now, looking back, what's your opinion? I should have did something. I really do. I should have did something. Yeah. That's what I honestly believe. Because I feel that time that I pulled her out the shower, that should have been me. I should have just picked up the phone and called the cops right then and there. But my... My main, my main worry was that I did that and the cops really didn't do much. You know, they wouldn't have looked at it as he's doing anything bad because we were all in there, you know, while they were in the shower. I didn't even know until I heard her voice. And I was like, where's Summer? Oh, she's in the bath with her dad. I'm like, what? What do you mean with her dad? And, and she Candace is like, yeah, he always takes a bath with her. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, and I just jumped, not jumped, but like I just got off the table right away. And I was like, where's her towel? And I looked and I found it right on the dryer and I just grabbed it. And I'm like, Summer, and she's like, yes. Um, And she's like, yes, okay. I said, come out here, baby, just like that. And she's like, okay. And she came out and I just wrapped her up in the towel and that's when Dawn came out of the shower still half full of soap screaming at me you know and I'm like I really don't 
you know, and I was swearing back at him. But I basically told I didn't care because I don't think like that. And then I looked at Candace. I said, matter of fact, you go and take a bath with Summer. I said, this is not going to happen anymore. But looking at that, that's when I should have just picked up the phone and called. But I didn't, wasn't sure if anything would have happened or not. Yeah, I mean, you, you called it the way you saw it. I mean, I, I yeah. understand. Well, go ahead, uh, Josh, what are your thoughts? Well, you, well, you would have been out. You, first of all, you'd have been out of a, uh, obviously, you're probably thinking as well, I'm not going to have a place to stay. Uh, and um, No, because, no, at that time, I already was working. So I had, you know, money saved up a little bit. So even if I would have got kicked out or I didn't have nowhere to go, I had money for me to at least stay a night or two in a hotel and try to figure out what I was going to do. Yeah. But that's not where my mindset was. You know, I really didn't, it was a red flag, just not to that extent. You know, it was just kind of like a weird thing to me. Well, I mean, it was weird yeah. enough for you to have a confrontation about it. Oh yeah. Well, he confronted me. <laughs> I didn't confront him. All I did was talk to the baby, pulled her out, and told Candace to take a bath with the baby. That was it. Right. I was trying to avoid him at all costs. I got you. You know, I was trying to avoid confrontation. I don't like to fight at all. I'd rather de-escalate a situation than, than make it worse. The So I do have a question is as to now when you showed up there, were you – Cause you said that you were a full blown alcoholic at the time. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. I when, was pretty much drinking all the time. You drank the whole, basically the whole time you were, you were there with them. No, not the whole time. No. Once I started to work, I just eased up off the liquor and just went to work. And then maybe two, three days ago by then I'll drink a little something and that was it. But like me working and then helping them in there it it controlled me you know it put me it put their situation put me in line you know even though i was going through whatever i was going through their situation just rattled me enough that i gotta stop drinking all the time because i don't know what could happen in here you know were you there for so any birthday why. parties, Jose? Did they? Did the kids have birthday parties? No, no birthday parties. What, what did Basically. it? Was anybody's birthday? Did it happen when you were there? No. Okay, so that really sheds a lot of light onto the basic routine, the day-to-day -day things that were going on there at Ben Hill Road, and he got to see the difference between Candace when Dawn is there. And then after John came back, he was able to see how Candace was behaving. And supposedly Dawn was controlling and that Candace and her mother, um, Candace Har, Candy Har or Grandis, were both kind of afraid of Dawn. And there was the complaint made by Candace to the police saying that she was afraid for herself and her children, that he gets violent when he drinks. And for me, it's just seeing now that she, she really doesn't say much. She only sticks to the story. It could be that he's the one that wants to be in control. It could be that she's in fear. You know, when there's someone like that, um, possibly that she doesn't want to talk because she's afraid for the repercussions of what might happen to her anyway so that is just um those are some basic thoughts but let me know if you all have noticed anything um, about jose what he's saying now the strange thing is the time frame as to how long he was really there um because i think he thought it was a lot longer than it turned out to be and then it was kind of funny because his story talking about when they were in the car, it kind of sounds the same as the photo of Summer, what we're told about um, Hunter being there and the positioning. It's very interesting. 
Okay, so leave me your comments and I will look and see what you all have to say. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe and turn on the bell so that I will have you back next time. Thank you so much and bye for now.